Good morning. Today, we as an MBA community have a precious opportunity to actively listen and learn from our renowned guests and to increase our awareness, taking a step closer to our school's theme this year, Radical Goodness. Dr. Christina Edmondson is an NAACP Image Award nominated author, co-host of the award-winning Truth's Table podcast, sought after emotional health and faith speaker and organizational consultant. Known for her humor, wisdom, and empathy in communication. However, it is often Dr. Edmondson's strategic work behind the scenes that has earned her reputation of an emotionally intelligent truth teller and change maker within higher education, corporate, faith-based, and entertainment spaces. Dr. Edmondson is well studied in the social sciences with degrees from Hampton University, the University of Rochester, and the Uni Tennessee State University. She has taught and administrated at universities and seminaries, formerly serving as an administrative dean of intercultural student development at Calvin University. Dr. Edmondson's work has been featured in multiple news outlets and books, including most recently two co-authored works, Truth's Table, Black Women's Musing on Life, Love and Liberation, and InterVarsity's Presses 2023. Justice Award Book of the Year, Faithful Anti-Racism. Dr. Edmondson lives in Tennessee with her family and enjoys her serving her community and local church. Please give a very warm welcome to our truly remarkable, inspiring guests with whom we have the pleasure of spending time with this morning and from whom we will learn today. Without further ado, Dr. Christina H. Edmondson. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have not had the pleasure to ever be in this room. I've, I've been on your campus, I think a couple times before for Indata. My daughter's an artist right across the street at SBA. And this has been a really sweet morning for me. So I appreciate your hospitality. So my topic this morning is black history is American history. Now that might seem obvious, but maybe not. So we're gonna spend some time on that. But before we even get into that topic, I wanna talk to you first about one of my household's favorite topics, which is the Marvel and DC series. Do I have some fans in the house? I hope so. I would assume so. Whether it's the Hawk or Spider-Man, whether it is the Black Panther, I'm a big fan of the Marvel series. And I think the reason why I'm a fan of the Marvel series and a little bit of the DC is because just like people from ancient history, ancient Greece and Rome, even today we seek to make meaning of what's happening in our world. The contemporary version of making meaning of what's happening in our world is comic books. I hope you don't miss that. How do we make meaning of injustice? How do we make meaning of complexity and things that we don't understand that are mysterious? Well, comic book writers help us to expand our imagination. And they are walking in the same tradition as the ancient Greek writers who used Greek gods to help us to make sense of what's happening in the world today. In other words, they used mythology then and mythology now to help us to answer tough questions. Mythology is creative and interesting, but it's also a great temptation. And it's incredibly important that we can sort through the difference between what is mythology and what is actual history. What is mythology and what is actual history? Black history is American history. And when it comes to black history in America, there is very real temptation for us to lean into mythology because of how it makes us feel versus leaning into the truth of a matter. 
But I invite you to do the courageous work of leaning into truth, even though myths are quite interesting. Whether it's the names of political leaders like Shirley Chisholm, the first black woman in 1972 to run for the office of the presidency of the United States, whether it's names like Bessie Coleman, one of the first African-American pilots, female, or the contributions of African-American dancer and choreographer Alvin Ailey. There is so much that we can learn from our historical and present day neighbors about the beauty and the impact of history. Three things I want you to know is that African-American history is a history that highlights perseverance, creativity, and competence. Perseverance, creativity, and competence. And you, leaders now and leaders to come, must know real history. Because knowing real history allows us to appreciate real people, past and present. I want you to think about a young couple. Valentine's Day is coming up this week. And let's say one of the partners says to the other, tell me the story of how we first met. And the other one goes, I don't know. I mean, that wouldn't be a good idea. That's one of those things that people expect the other person to know. And not knowing it isn't just a slip of memory, not knowing it is evidence potentially of not caring enough to know it. And so learning each other's histories is a way of demonstrating a respect and regard for each other. Knowing each other's stories matters. And respecting the history that others have been through allows us to better respect their group today. So it's not an empty cliche when people talk about the importance of history that if you don't know it, you don't understand today. It's just true. If we don't know history, we will misinterpret the present. Hear me again. If we don't know history, even the inconvenient and uncomfortable truths of it, then we will misinterpret our present moment. If we misinterpret our present moment, then we're unable to act rightly as leaders. So, what lenses do you have on this morning? Some of you literally lenses as in your eyeglasses, but the lenses in which you see and understand the world. Each of us has a set of lenses that help us to make sense of our own identity and the identity of those around us. Some of us are really aware of the lenses that we wear and some of us are not aware at all, but yet we live and we view the world out of them. I invite you to embrace not historical mythology, but historical accuracy so that you might correct the lenses that you have and that we can do this work together. Now, as I was preparing to come here today, I checked out some of your values here at Montgomery Bell Academy and shout out to that performance of the John Legend song. That was very good, y'all, very good this morning. Yeah, give it up. <laughs> There were many things that I stumbled upon that I, I smiled as I read about how you see yourselves, how your administrators and your educators invest in you to be something that's not just good for you, but to become something that is good for this entire world, to become the type of leaders that help to make our society more just, more ethical, more hopeful. And that is my hope for you, is that you will see how history, all histories, help you to become that kind of leader. I looked at some of your values like respect, humility, kindness, empathy, and courage. Respect, humility, kindness, empathy, and courage. And if I was to imagine what kind of leaders that we needed in this world today, those would be the qualities that I would advocate for. And as I think about the beauty and the impact 
the perseverance, creativity, and competence of African American history, I'm reminded of one of those values being beautifully embodied by a black woman that was cognitively disabled, petite in size, but a powerhouse for justice, who fully embodied courage, D. Harriet Tubman. Now you might know of Harriet Tubman, and here's a bit of history for you to think about your own leadership. As someone referred to as the Black Moses, known for rescuing her brothers from enslavement on Christmas Day, making dozens of trips to the Deep South in order to free people from an unjust and cruel system. But did you also know that this petite-sized black woman with a cognitive disability led a Union Army team to emancipate 700 enslaved people as one of the first women to do such a thing in the United States. Why should you know this history? Because there is strength, even if you're not a petite-sized African-American woman, to pull from that. That is courage. So not mythology, but real history inspires us and shapes us. One of the things about Western culture and different cultures around the world have different lenses, remember? And we as individuals have different lenses. But one of the things about Western culture is that sometimes in the West we have this belief of inevitable improvement, inevitable progress, right? That if time just keeps moving along, things are just going to get better. Clearly they can't get worse. There is a belief that justice is inevitable if you just wait long enough. However, leaders, leaders like you, must be willing to see what is wrong and work to build what is right, especially when it's inconvenient. Justice is not inevitable. Justice is named and worked for day by day and brick by brick. And when you embrace African American history as American history, you'll know that. And it will become a part of who you are and fill you with the courage that you need to be that type of leader. Let me give you a quick example. I imagine some of you who have taken American history are familiar with the 13th Amendment. Your history teachers are looking like, y'all better raise your hand. Are you familiar <laughs> with that? The 13th Amendment is the amendment to abolish enslavement of Africans in the United States of America. It's a really important amendment. Uh, the amendment is so important that I would not be speaking to you today if not for it. It's a big deal, y'all. But do you know that it was not the first amendment that was drafted for that spot of the 13th? Oh, it wasn't. There were multiple amendments that were drafted around that same time period. And instead of them advocating for the abolishment of enslavement of African people, well, some of them, like Corwin's amendment and Crittenden's amendment, did just the opposite. They sought to make enslavement of Africans a state's right into perpetuity forever and ever as long as the U.S. existed. Justice is not inevitable. It's just not. And leaders full of courage who respect and honor history will call a broken thing a broken thing and seek to make justice happen and not go on autopilot. Real history, the kind that makes us even comfortable in our bodies right now, real history will challenge our biases, which is a good thing. And it will lead us to truly respecting each other truly seeing each other. Stereotypes limit our imagination. They limit our ability to see people well and to see ourselves well. They're cognitively lazy. It's kind of a cheat sheet to understanding someone else. But courageous leadership requires that we push past easy stereotypes and we dismantle all of the biases that we have so that we can treat each other with dignity and respect. 
So my question for you this morning, and knowing that African American history is American history, a history of perseverance, perseverance, creativity, and competence, what will you do with this knowledge now? What will you do with what you know? And this is what separates a leader from a courageous leader. What separates a leader from an empathetic leader is that when you have seen what is true, you act out of courage and integrity. I invite you to continue to accept this challenge and to be the kind of leaders that seek out diverse histories, the same as your own and different from your own group, so that you might see yourselves and your neighbors with integrity. And I look forward to seeing the kind of leaders that you will be that our world so desperately needs. The kind of leaders that are filled with courage, integrity, and empathy for all people who resist mythology, even though it's easy and entertaining, but embraces real history so that we can radically pursue justice and care and respect for each other. Happy Black History Month, y'all. It is American history.